Hey everyone, Kelly Dean Allen here. Uh, so then, seems that I've been banging out a fair amount of content over the past week or two in drop D tuning. So I figured that I would devote an entire video to said tuning and have a look at what I believe are the seven essential drop D guitar riffs to learn and get under your belt. Now, of course, there are thousands of tracks, mostly alt rock, grunge, and metal that utilize drop D tuning. However, there are those that stand above all the rest for the most part, uh, the go-to drop D riffs, if you will, and those are the ones that we're going to be having a look at in this video, the famous ones. So then, grab your standard tune guitar, take that low E string, tune it down to D, and and let's get started with my number seven drop D riff. All right then, my number seven essential drop D riff is Lateralis by Adam Jones and Tool. Uh, we are in drop D tuning, of course. It's the whole point of this video. So uh, take your standard tune guitar, drop your low E string down one full step to D. Everything else, standard tuning. So then, the uh, the opening of Lateralis has this uh, this quiet bit, and I'm going to show you that before we get to the uh, the killer main riff of this one. It goes a little something like this. So we're starting on an open E string, and then we're going to go down to the uh, seventh fret of the D string. Then you're going to hammer on five to seven, and then back to the low E string. And then you're going to go down to the five of the G, and then up to the seven of the D. Back to the low E, and then you're going to do a hammer on from five to seven of the D, back off to five. And then you're going to roll up to the five of the A and that finishes the whole refrain, right? And after you repeat that four times, we drop into this. There's lots of delay and whatnot going on here, carrying some of these notes, right? We're going to roll up from the 5. We just finished on that 5 of the A. We're going to roll up to the 5 of the low E, and then grab the 7 of the D, and then move our index back to 3, so a bit of stretch, and then back to that 7 of the D, and then repeat. But you're only going to repeat it one more time before dropping back into that again, right? And then you're going to repeat all of that six more times. Right? So only at the beginning do you repeat it four times before, before moving into that and every other time it's only going to be once. And then we kick into the main riff, and this is such a heavy riff, love this. Right, we're going to repeat that three times. Open D power chord, uh, just the top three strings. You're going to strike that four times, but after the second time, you're going to do a quick down-up mute, and then you're going to strike it two more times, and then another down-up mute. Kind of like that, right? And then we drop into this. So we're going to drop onto the fifth fret, this G power chord here, at the fifth fret. We're going to strike that three times. And then you're going to go off to open, onto the three, off to open, back onto the three. And then you're going to hang on this three and play basically the same way we uh, we started the riff when we started in open D, right, with the mutes in between. Now you're going to do the exact same thing on this F power chord here at the third fret. Right, hit it twice, double mute, hit it twice, double mute. So from the beginning. Right. 
right? And then we finish up the riff with this. So we're gonna move back into five here, hit it twice, off to three, off to open. Back onto three, slide it into five. And you're gonna hit that a couple of times, maybe three or four times, a little mute in the middle as well. Like that, right? Then off to three. Jump way up here to the 10th fret, power chord, C power chord, and then drop onto a D power chord at the 12th fret, right? And then start the riff again. repeat the riff three times the last time you do not go up to this C onto D at the 10 to 12 we're gonna do that we're gonna hit that F power chord once hammer on to five back off to uh, the third fret and then off to an open D power chord and choke it off And that is how you play the opening to Lateralis by Adam Jones and Tool. Let's move on to number six. All right, for number six, uh, this one is not technically in drop D. It's in drop C sharp, but it's the same thing, right? Your, your low E string tuned down one full step from the rest of the strings. But in this case, they're tuned down another half step, but it's the same kind of deal, right? It's just tuned down another half step. So we're gonna call this drop D, even though technically it's drop C sharp. And this is Them Bones by Alice in Chains. And it goes something like this. And that's the opening of it. So we're grabbing a little D shape here, just on the G and the B string, five and six. Just gonna grab those two notes together, a little double stop, give them a little waggle. And then you're gonna go up here to the open power chords, the one finger power chords, right? So you're gonna start on the open, then you're gonna drop onto the one, then the two, then the three. So the pattern is open twice, four, three, one, right? All palm muted. And then you go back to this little double stop again. And you repeat that four times. But before you do go back down to this uh, little double stop, you're gonna hit the open uh, power chord twice quickly, right? Right? And then you finally stop and we're into the first verse. The first verse is very similar. Instead of the double stop here, we're gonna move it back three spots to D. Right there, right? And we're gonna do something kind of similar using all the same power chords. We're gonna strike that D, that little D double stop, immediately into an open D power chord, and then you're just gonna ride it one, two, three. Back off to open quickly before dropping back into this little D double stop, right? And you repeat that four times. Actually repeat it eight times. Right, and that's the riff. And then we drop into the uh, kind of the chorus, pre-chorus chorus, right? So we're gonna slide into the eighth fret, one finger power chord, right? Strike that four or five times and then back it up one spot. And strike that two or three times, right? And then we're gonna play that little lick, little hammer on from uh, nine to 11 of the D. Drop into this little double stop on the uh, nine, 10 of the G and the B. And then we're gonna, I'm a little out of tune, sorry about that. And then we're gonna move into the 10. Strike that four or five times, right? Back it up. 
strike it three or four times there at the uh, ninth fret position, and then finish the whole phrase and, and the chorus with a single hit on the eighth fret power chord right there, right? Right, before dropping back into this. Right, all palm muted, right? So that is the chorus. And then back into the riff again. And that is Them Bones by Allison Chains. Let's move on, number five. Good then, as you just saw, my number five essential drop D riff is Slither by Slash and Velvet Revolver. So uh, before we get to the main riff, there's a bit of an intro to this one. Uh, just a few chords, you know, there's like three or four different guitars going on here at the beginning of this one. Volume swells and whatnot and, you know, scrapes down the neck and thick scrapes down the neck and whatnot. Just lots of ambient type of uh, noisy guitars. But underneath it all, there's two main guitars. Just one doing this. A D chord, not really worrying about the high E string here. Then up to a C, you know, with the open D. So just the third fret of the A string, third fret of the B string, everything else open, right? And then just a G, just move that off to two. You know, not really dropping your finger on the third fret of the low E, e there for that G. And then back to D, right? And now there's octave guitars going on over this. This we're going to continue this. We're going to you know add a little bit of embellishment here and there. Right, and that's when the main riff kicks in. Uh, but there's octaves going on. over this, right? So these octaves, uh, D octave here, fifth fret of the A string, seventh fret of the G. Gonna move it up three spots and then move it up two spots. And now we're on the, uh, the 10 and the 12, right? And then we're gonna go back. Move it up three spots and then move it back to D. And you just repeat that twice. And then the second time you choke it off. And then we're into the main riff. So uh, all one finger power chords here, we're going to start with an open D power chord and then we're going to slide from three into four. Back off to open and then we're going to jump up here and do the exact same thing from six to seven. Off to open again and then we're going to grab the tenth fret and then we're going to immediately bounce back to the six and slide it into seven. And then you're going to go off to open again. We keep bouncing back off to the open power chord, right? And then we're going to drop onto the five, off to the three, and back into four. Repeat. And then the fourth time, you do not do the slide. You just hang on that G power chord, or F actually, because we're tuned down, right? On the third fret. And, uh, and that leads into the first verse, where we're just gonna play the same thing without the slides and much quieter. And there's a little lead line there playing along with the melody, right? Open D, three, four. Open D, six, seven. Open D, 10. The same thing, we're just playing along with the riff, right? 
Back to the uh, back to the six seven, and then five off to three, right? Sing line is the power chords, right? So, uh, like I said, during the uh, the verse, you're just you're going to play the exact same thing, but quieter, and none of the slides. It's just all palm muted, uh, you know, power chords. And every fourth time, you're not going to go back to this four. You're just going to hang on that three, right? Right, every fourth time. And that leads into the chorus. The chorus is the same as the opening. D up to C, then off to G, and then back to D. And then back into the main riff. While one guitar is still doing this, the other guitar jumps back into the main riff. And that is it. That is pretty much how you play that one. And uh, so let's move on to my number four, Essential Drop D Riff. All right, outshined Kim Thale and Soundgarden. Great, heavy, uh, grungy riff. This one goes a little something like this. Now we're going to be repeating that 13 times at the beginning of this track, four at the very beginning, and then nine more times during the first verse. And uh, so what we're doing here is a couple of palm muted open E strings. And you know, you catch a little bit of the A string, fine. And then you're going to drop into your one finger power chords here, three, five, three, back off to open. And then when you go back off to open, you're going to drop right back onto this three, but not into a power chord. Just a single note here at the third fret, palm muted. And then you're immediately going to drop down to the third fret of the A string. Right, kind of like that. And now you're going to drop into more power chords here. Fifth fret, quickly slide it into six. Back to five, and then back to three, and slide out of it. And then right back into the riff again, right? So that is the riff that we're going to be repeating 13 times. And then we're into the pre-chorus. Pre-chorus goes like this. Right, which we're going to repeat four times. Uh, we're grabbing a couple of notes here on the seventh fret of the G and the B string with our uh, ring finger and pinky, along with the open D string. I'm going to strum that three or four times, and then you're going to drop your index onto the fifth fret of the D string. Now you're going to take that fifth fret, back it up to four. And then you're going to drop into these rather dissonant little uh, chords here. Uh, the five of the D and the five of the B. And then you're going to back it up two spots. And then you're going to drop your pinky on the five. And then catch a couple of open strings. Open B, open G on the upstroke. Just as a transition back into this again. Right? Right? So... Back it up to four, onto the fives, back it up to three, catch that five of the high E with your pinky, and then catch the open B, open G on the upstroke, just before jumping back into this. And after you repeat that three times, 
then we're going to grab some octaves here, two and five, move it up two spots, move it up three spots, right? And then just open strings, an open D power chord, bottom three or four strings, right? Kind of like that. So uh, that whole section there, that little pre-chorus uh, section, doesn't sound very musical without any accompaniment, right? But... And then we're into the chorus. into the riff again. So the chorus. Seven, five, open, three, on to five, back off to open. Back into five, off to three, off to open, back on to the three. Right, back off to open. Back onto the three. And you're gonna go into the six, hit that six power chord three or four times, back it up to five, back it up to three, back off to open. Right, kind of like that. And after you go off to open, we're gonna jump way up here to the 10th fret. Hit that, you know, six or seven times. And then drop onto the 12. And then right back into the chorus again, the chorus riff. Back up here. Again. And then you're just gonna hang on that 10, right? At, with double hits four times. And then you just slide out of it after the fourth time, right back into the main riff again, right? And that is how you play Outshine by Soundgarden. Let's move on to my next essential drop D riff. Good then, my number three essential drop D guitar riff is Tom Morello and Rage Against the Machine with Killing in the Name Of. And uh, this one starts easily enough, just a, a D chord here, right? Not worrying too much about the high E string here. Just, just hammering away on all bottom five strings. Do a four count, do it again. You're gonna repeat that four times. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. And then the bass, right? And then the guitars kick back in with this. Right, so open, open E string, you're gonna choke it off three times. Kind of just drop your fingers back on the strings, right? Kind of like that, right? Really staccato. And then you're gonna go 11, 12 of the D and then 11, 12 of the G. You're gonna repeat that four times, but the last time we're gonna do a little, do a little bend instead of uh, 11 to 12, right? So we're going 11, 12, D, 11, 12, G. You're picking each note. These are not hammer-ons. And then the last time, instead of going 11, 12, you're just going to drop right onto the 12, do a quick little full step bend release. 
like that, right? And you repeat that whole phrase twice. <laughs> And then we drop into this. So, uh, same thing, right? Choking off three open E strings. And you're gonna grab the sixth fret of the A string there and hit that three times and repeat that four times. And then the final time, you're not gonna hit it three times, you're just gonna hit uh, hit that note on the sixth fret of the A string, along with the octave here at the uh, eighth fret of the G. Let it ring for a bit and then choke it off, right? You could even do little slides from the five into that six. I think there's a little slide there. Right, and then we're into the main riff. So what we're doing here is open power chord, open D power chord, and then you're immediately gonna hammer on three to five of the A string, and then you're gonna do a quick little down up mute. And then you're gonna hammer on three to four of the D up to five of the A. Then you're gonna go back to an open D power chord, drop onto the second fret here of an E power chord, slide it into F, slide it back to uh, E, and then back off to open again and repeat the riff. So you're gonna repeat that 12 times, four times just like that, and then the next eight times during the first verse, you're gonna you're gonna play the exact same thing, but quieter. Something like that, right? And then once it gets heavy again, we drop back into a similar riff, but different. that right there. So we're gonna hit an open D power chord again. We're gonna do another hammer on from three to five, but this time we're gonna jump down here to the uh, four of the G string after a couple of mutes, right? And now we're gonna repeat that and we're gonna descend this four the next time, we're gonna move it back to three and then the next time we're gonna move it back to two. Kind of like that, right? And then we're gonna go back into more power chords, single finger power chords up here. Right, you're gonna hit an open D power chord and then you're gonna hammer on two to three twice. Back to two, back off to open, repeat the riff. And then leading into the chorus, we're just gonna grab a C power chord, palm mute it, chug it. And then you're gonna move into a D here at the fifth fret with its octave at the uh, seventh fret of the G. Right? And that's the kind of the pre chorus, right? strike that a number of times. And then we get into this riff. Might as well show you that too while we're at it. Just, you know, now we're now we're kind of getting funky, right? Just the octaves, you know, muting the D string in between with the, you know, the, the pad of your index finger, right? Then you're gonna go three to five power chords, single finger power chords, right? 
And then you're gonna drop down to a C octave, right? Three and five. Right, and that's that little section there. And that is about enough of that one. That's about five minutes into that one. So let's move on to my number two essential drop D riff. Right then, my number two essential drop D guitar riff is one of the greatest guitar riffs ever composed by one Mr. Eddie Van Halen and Unchained from the band's 1982, I think, album, uh, Fair Warning. Now, technically, drop C sharp, like Alice in Chains, them bones. However, this one was written, performed, and composed uh, in the studio uh, in drop D, yet they pitched it down another half step in post-production, maybe to accommodate David Lee Ross' vocals, I'm not certain about that, but it is a drop D riff. And like I said, it's kind of the same idea, right? Having your low E string tuned down one full step from all the other strings. However, in this case, everything is pitched down another half step into C sharp. But it is a drop D riff, like I said. So anyway, this riff, just killer. <laughs> first verse. So there's more going on with this riff than initially meets the uh, eye and ear, uh, for, especially from a, a timing standpoint. So we're starting with this uh, D major bar chord here at the fifth fret position. We're going to strike that chord, four middle strings, and then we're going to drop onto the sus here on the eighth fret of the B string. Now the very first time you drop onto that sus, you're dropping on the offbeat, so you're rushing it a little bit. Uh, if it's a one and two, you're dropping on the and because you need time for five chugs of the open E string. Every other time you go into D, you're dropping that sus on the beat and you're only going to have time for four chugs of the open E string. One, two, three, four, five. So the very first time you're, you're kind of rushing it a little bit, dropping it on the off beat so you have time for five chugs of the open E. One, two, three, four, five, right? Palm muted. One, two, three, four, five. Then you're going to move the whole thing down to a, a sharp, an A sharp major bar chord here. Drop on, hit the chord, drop onto the sus, and then back off to the chord again. Move the whole thing up to C, do the exact same thing. But before you do move it up to C, you're going to grab a quick open palm muted E string. And then you're going to move the whole thing back into D. And again, before you do move it back into D, another quick palm muted open E string. Now, when you do move back into D and you drop on that sus, this time you're dropping on the beat, not on the and, right? You're dropping on the two. And you're only going to have time for four chugs of the open E string. So kind of like this. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, right? One more time. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. See, you've delayed it just a little bit that second time. And then we move up here into F and play that little lick right there. So we're gonna strike this F bar chord. It's all major chords that we're using here, F major bar chords, right? We're moving into F at the eighth fret position. Gonna do the same thing, drop onto the sus at the 11th fret of the B and back off again. And then another quick hit of that open E. And then we're gonna drop into a little F major triad. Now we're only striking three strings here. 10th fret bar, right? And then you're gonna lift it off to a C major triad. 10, 9, 8. So you kind of just lift right out of that bar, right into the C major, kind of like that, right? And then you're back into the riff again, but you're back into the second half of the riff. We're not repeating it yet, right? Now we're going to go into two chugs of the open E, and we're back into D again, dropping on the beat. And you're only going to have time for four chugs. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, 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 bum. Right? Not five chugs like we did the first time. 
And then we move off to A sharp again. Bum, 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 bum. And then back into D, right? Four chugs. Back into F. And now we're starting to repeat the riff. So when we go back into D this time, we're only going to hit the open E once before dropping into D and then dropping on the sus. And this time we are going to drop it on the off beat in time to have five chugs of the open E. One, two, three, four, five. You follow that uh, from a from a standpoint of timing, right? Like I said, it's a little more complicated than initially uh, meets the ear. So that is the riff. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then we're into the first verse and that is how you play unchained at least the opening riff uh let's move on to my number one uh essential drop d guitar riff and it seems like it's everybody's favorite All right, for my number one essential drop D guitar riff, I had to go with the crowd favorite on this one, and Everlong by the Foo Fighters and Dave Grohl. I was on uh, Reddit uh, last week, and somebody posted the question in the guitar forum of uh, what is your drop D test riff, and there was like a thousand comments, and sitting right at the top was Everlong with the, uh, the most upvotes and the most subsequent comments. And uh, a couple of weeks earlier, somebody posted the question, what is your favorite drop D guitar riff, and sitting right at the top after about a thousand comments was Everlong again. So it seems to be the one that everyone seems to like the most. So uh, I had to put it as my number one because it's a great goddamn riff, isn't it? And uh, so then, you know there's multiple guitars going on here at the beginning of this one. It's nearly impossible to replicate exact because Foo Fighters have three guitar players and they're all being used at the beginning of this track and they're all doing different things. But the, uh, the first guitar, that, that the quiet guitar when it first starts, is playing the main riff, right? <laughs> that right there. So what we're doing is we're starting on the open E string. We're playing these three chords. The first one is this little, uh, like a little power chord on the 9 and the 11 of the A and the D string along with the open E. That chord right there. The next chord we're just going to bar the 9th fret while still holding our uh, ring finger here on the 11 of the D. And then we're just going to move this entire shape back four spots to the 5th fret position. And then we're going to move it back. So those are the three chords for the main riff. Now the rhythm of what we're doing here, all downstrokes. So we're gonna start with two open E's, then we're gonna strike the chord, open E, strike the chord twice, open E, strike the chord three times, open E, strike the chord three times. So it's one, two, three, three. Each time bouncing back to the open E string. One, two, three, three, right? Now you kind of want to press release, press release, press release. There's a slight staccato to this, right? You don't want to just hold your fingers in place. And then we're going to move into the second chord, play the exact same rhythm. But to kickstart our move into the second chord, a quick open E. Right? And then we keep bouncing back to this uh, ninth fret here of the low E. 
we move it back to the five and the rhythm changes a little bit. We're gonna start letting those chords ring a little bit so we, we can leave them in place, right? So we're gonna start with an open E, drop into it, and then we're gonna strike the, the low E string three times before each pick strike of the chord, right? And we hit it twice in this position. And then we move it back to the, the uh, ninth position and do the same thing, but four times. Right, each time going back to the low E string, striking it three times. And that is the riff. Right, and that continues while another guitar joins at this point, just playing the chords. Da -da -da, you know, with a little down, up, down. Right, and then a third guitar joins playing this. So we're just holding a bar on the A string, D string, and G string with our index at the ninth fret, 11 of the D, and we're just gonna strike that very staccato twice, and then we're gonna drop our pinky on the 11 of the G, and then off again. And you repeat that four times. And again, you know, where we're being quite staccato, you kinda of wanna press in, release, press in, release. And then we back it up to this position here, strike this four times, uh, five, seven, six. Right, very staccato, four times and then back to this twice. So that is the opening and the three different guitar parts. And, uh, and then we drop into the first verse, which is the main riff just played more aggressively and a little looser. You're, you don't have to stick to that one, two, three, three pattern, right, that we were playing earlier. It's still pretty close, but it, it's much looser. <laughs> this in the middle of the first verse right into the second half of the first verse same thing for two repeats and then we drop into the octaves the the uh, the pre-chorus if you will that right there. I'm going to repeat that three times. Octaves on the four and the six, four of the A string, six of the uh, G. We're going to descend these up the neck, move it up to five and seven, move it up to seven and nine, move it up to nine and eleven, and then we're finally going to do a quick little slide from nine, eleven into ten and twelve. Right, kind of like that. You're going to hang on that nine, nine, eleven a little bit longer. And then you're going to drop into this A power chord here, just barring the entire seventh fret, holding your pinky down here on the nine of the G. Right, and then you repeat it three times. Now leading into the chorus, we're going to go off to B. So uh, the same kind of chord, right? Full bar holding your pinky down here on the 11. Move it back to five, then we're gonna drop down into D. And by dropping down into D, we're still holding our pinky down here on the seven from this, this uh, G chord here. And then we're just gonna shift off to open E, five, four, while still holding this. And you can actually bar the G and the B string for that D chord, right? that twice. One more time. 
and now we're going to go down to the D from the uh, the G into a B, same kind of chord, barring the seventh fret, holding the nine with your pinky, right? And then back it up to G. Sorry, I called that B, that's A. And then we're going to back it up to G. And that's the end of the chorus. She said, and then back to this, right? And, uh, and that's it. That's pretty much how you play all of uh, Everlong, at least all the rhythm parts. And uh, certainly hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button. Drop me a subscribe if you haven't done that already, as that would be very kind and helpful to the growth of my channel. Hope you're well out there in your little guitar corner of the world, wherever that may find you. And we will see you next time. Cheers.